This is Lenny Farley, Purdue Extension Forester, and this is a Woodland Management Moment. In this Woodland Management Moment, we're going to talk some about grapevines. Uh, these two S-shaped vines that you see on the ground here are one of our species of native grape. Uh, you can see that it is, it is a vine with uh, brown shreddy bark, several different species native to Indiana, and so they're a part of our environment, but sometimes, depending on our management objectives and where these vines are located, and the number we have per acre, we may decide to do some management uh, in, in reference to the, their presence in tops of trees and other situations where they may be competing with other plants that we would like to grow. So grapevines will grow up into the canopies of trees and can actually cover over the leaf area, distorting the tops, creating significant competition with the tree for sunlight, and in some cases even killing trees. In addition, if we have a big ice storm or a heavy snow event, they can actually tear out branches of the tops of trees because of the extra weight. And so in some cases, if we have trees that we would really like to grow on our property, we'll control grapevines. However, we may also have objectives aimed toward wildlife habitat and wildlife habitat elements, and grapevines are an excellent part of that. Grapevines provide a fair amount of food in the terms of the wild grapes some escape cover with the heavy cover in the tops of trees and shrubs and some birds even use the bark for nesting material so there is a place on our landscape for grapevines to exist as a natural part of our wildlife habitat environment what i often do on my property is i'll leave some grapevines on the edges of the woods near stream corridors or in patches perhaps where the trees aren't ones that i necessarily want to favor the growth of in trees where I want to favor their growth and I have grapevines in them, I'll typically cut them just uh, a few inches to a foot off ground. And if we follow this grapevine, we'll notice that it loops in and out of the ground. It's oftentimes a good idea to cut those loops also where they exit the ground. If we have plenty of shade, in many cases you can simply cut that grapevine and leave it. It will re-sprout, but they don't do well in shade. Plus the deer really have a tendency to enjoy uh, munching on those sprouts. If we've got a fair amount of sunlight, like we do in this uh, older clear-cut area, it's a good idea to treat those cut stumps with an herbicide like high percent glyphosate, triclopyr, or one of the Tordon or Pathway products to control that root system and prevent it from re-sprouting and letting that vine climb back up into the tops of trees. So we can see where this grapevine actually is looping around and I'm going to follow it around and we've actually got to go several feet to find the tree that it's actually climbing up into the top of. And we can see where that grapevine has climbed up in the top spreading out in the canopy and will shade that canopy top and significantly compete with that tree. And so thinking about your management objectives, thinking about what you want to accomplish on different parts of your property will help you decide whether to kill grapevines at certain locations or keep them as a part of your wildlife habitat. If you've got questions about grapevine control, where and when to keep them, how to do it, contact your forester and they can definitely give you some advice and assistance on that.